Freely the Frugivore versus Red Pill Philosophy. Uh, Red Pill Philosophy is a great channel. I really like the programs. Uh, it's stimulating, uh, generally quite intelligent, um, and very glad to hear that uh, Red Pill Philosophy is talking about and engaging in some uh, e explorations with uh, plant-based nutrition. Um, very exciting times for this uh, kind of diet and uh, all the science behind it that's, that's uh, developing and, and supporting uh, that approach to eating. So yeah, Red Pill Philosophy criticizes freely for her meat eaters deserves to die. I think this is a deserved criticism. Uh, the concept um, deserve isn't actually philosophical, um, so you can't really use it as, as a, any kind of an argument. Um, it's just a personal subjective thing. Uh, so yeah, deserve is undefined, and also I think this is it's like it's kind of an attack. It's almost passive aggressive or, or even overtly aggressive. Um, you know, bear in mind, lots of children eat meat as well, and it's just what their parents give to them. They haven't chosen it. So condemning all meat eaters in, in any kind of um, reasonable uh, argument is just not acceptable. It doesn't make sense. Um, I have to reject it uh, on that basis. Also, I think uh, the way I came to vegan diet and, and eating, you know, phasing out the meat and all that is is from hearing from sort of fairly neutral and, and, and seeing uh, humble sort of vegan people present uh, the case, present the facts, uh, show the images and things of what's going on in uh, slaughterhouses, meat processing plants, very, very emotionally um, powerful. Uh, so yeah, that's from the philosophical point of view, the preferred approach, uh, I think. Um, that said, uh, it's, it's really the self-righteous and sort of indignant uh, vegans that, uh, that get the notice that you're, you're talking about freely, you're not talking about uh, the quiet and rational vegans. Um, so I wonder if you, you know, you, you're, you're really being uh, completely integrity here, why not talk about the, uh, the good arguments, the strong arguments, why, why, pick, on, uh, why pick on somebody who's... Um, attempting to get publicity and, and succeeding because you've made a program about her. Anyway, on to the uh, more serious points. So you've made a sort of equivalence between predatory animals um, and, and people who are sort of uh, almost uh, perhaps addicted is the right word, addicted to eating meat and saying they're not really at free will just like um, wild animals, we should just treat ourselves like wild animals. I don't buy this, I think it's a false equivalence. Um, predatory animals eat other animals because they um, may have like a, a biological uh, program, a, a, a trait that comes from their genes that gives them the instinct to hunt other animals or to harm other animals. Um, so that's not a free choice, that's something that's genetically programmed, it's not um, that the animals thought about it. And, and made a, 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 an, an informed decision. Um, also, uh, predatory animals may just be genuinely hungry. They're not, they don't have a supermarket. Well, maybe some do. They, there might be uh, pests like that. But in general, um, animals aren't a choice uh, in terms of their source of food. <clears throat> and this, this doesn't apply to humans. We, we have a very successful agricultural industry. Um, and you know we can go and we can generally choose just about anything that we want to eat. Um, so uh, yeah, there is no equivalence between a human that's uh, addicted and an animal that's that's hardwired um, and has little choice. Also, um, yeah, okay, in judging people that are kind of addicted. Uh, yeah, I think that that's not entirely unreasonable. For example, if a heroin addict breaks into your house and steals stuff, um, they're still a thief. Um, the fact that they've got this addiction or compulsion to engage in that behavior doesn't get them off uh, morally. And the reason for that, of course, is because they made a choice to, to, to take heroin um, or whatever, and also um, they're at choice in whether they go into uh, do some recovery or something like that. They, they, they've got help that they can get. Um, and these are things that can't really be applied equally to, say, a cat. 
um, which is just going to pounce on and, and swipe things that move um, because of some uh, deep and, and primitive programming uh, that it can't escape. And of course humans are a choice in, in what they eat. Uh, lots of people have gone vegetarian, they're a very significant population. Um, so this is sort of the, the hard data which shows that people actually do have choice. Um, and I don't see any equivalent data for, for cats or, or bears or whatever. So, um, holding people morally accountable, um, yeah, predatory animals and animals in general, non-human animals, I would regard in the same moral category as children. Um, so I reject the notion that you can sort of, in any, any sensible uh, argument, uh, hold lions accountable for, for the harm they do to, to deers or wildebeests or whatever it is. Um, we don't do this for children. We understand that children don't have the uh, developmental or cognitive ability at certain stages to understand the harms they cause and to feel um, the, the emotional pain that uh, they inflict. Um, for example, uh, if a child picks something up and bashes you, we don't call that an assault, we don't call the police, and we don't put a child in prison, except you know, maybe in the USA where uh, things like that are crazy and go on. Um, so again, I, th I, I think this is an inconsistency in, in your argument and application of ethics. Um, and another point, um, you, go, you talk about um, incidental harm, for example, a, a, the airplane takes off and occasionally it may uh, plough into some birds and kill them, um, and you, you make, you're making that the equivalent, or in some sense equivalent, to a person's decision to eat meat. Uh, this is, a, again, another false equivalence and uh, not a consistent application of, of ethical uh, rules. Uh, we do understand, for example, um, say I'm riding uh, my scooter into town and my intention is to go into town and get something and somebody steps out in front of me and I hit them and I cause them some harm. Uh, we understand that because there's no intent to harm the person there uh, that I'm not morally culpable, I'm not, I'm not guilty of, of murder or, or of um, assault or anything like that. Um, I'm still responsible for, for recompense for the harms I've caused. Um, but I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not guilty of a crime or anything like that. And, and we, should, we should apply the same thing to uh, anybody who's flying in an aircraft or um, as a, like a farmer um, uh, ploughing a field and you know, maybe he runs over a mouse or something occasionally. Um, uh, intent is an important factor in, in moral culpability and you, you really can't uh, persuade me that um, you know, when I ride my scooter uh, that's as bad morally as um, buying a gun and pointing it at somebody's head and, and you know, shooting at them. Uh, they're not the same. Um, so yeah, in conclusion, I think your argument's full, full of the uh, false equivalence fallacy and, and generally inconsistent application uh, of ethical principles. Um, so yeah, I hope this helps you to understand the uh, sort of vegan case a bit more and um, yeah you know I'm sorry that, that uh, there's people like Freely with these rather provocative and, and um, uh, perhaps not entirely rational uh, uh, points of view um, and also I, I, I don't think uh, shaming and attacking in general is, is productive to a good philosophical argument I mean it obviously isn't um, but it can be provocative and get attention and get the arguments made. And I, I think on that basis, um, I kind of say, well, I don't like it, but it's successful. And I'd like to close with, yeah, just saying that I, th I thought in the same way you're, you're sort of uh, fr comparing freely to a Nazi is, is you know, it's kind of, uh, you're doing the same thing as her. Um, and maybe you know it's a parody and sarcastic and so forth, and I get that. Um, but you know the reality is that it's it's non-human animals that are you know, going into the the death chambers, the slaughterhouses, um, and uh, that's I think you know, if we're going to compare somebody to a Nazi, I think we need to 
<laughs> look somewhere else other than at the vegans. Um, so anyway, thanks for listening. Um, hope you enjoyed this philosophical critique. And uh, there's loads of excellent arguments for animal rights on philosophers' boards, and I'll, I'll uh, and you know, of course, in uh, academic papers. So I will post some links below. Thanks for listening. Bye.